Good morning. I hope you're having a great day. So I got out here and I got all my frost cloth up so that my plants can get the nice sunshine. Nothing looks too bad. I saw a couple areas where some plants had gotten frost that weren't in the frost cloth. So I'm glad I put them down. Um, but everything's still looking good. And now I think we have a few weeks of no frost. So I should keep my season going. Well, everything's still looking good and not frosty. So as you can see here, this was just a random basil crop and all of the top of it got frosted. But the celosia looks pretty good. Some of it looks like it might have got frosted last night. Like this one has kind of a brownish tint to it. Actually, some of these do. But the ones up here don't. They all still look pretty good. So some of them don't. Some of them got it. Maybe the frost cloth kind of hurt them. I don't know. Um, let's go over here in the same area of the field and look at the edgerator that wasn't covered. Yeah, it definitely got some frost on it. So the thing with frost, and I didn't understand this until last year, really, until I started doing this flower farming. And then, you know, it was kind of making sense to me. So when they say like the, temp the temperature is 35, that's at a specific height above ground level that they measure the air temperature. And so if you have valleys in places where it's lower, like the air temperatures drop colder and get colder and those valleys and then you can have lower temperatures that are actually freezing so even though they predict 35 degrees it could drop down to like 32 degrees down in a valley down towards the ground so that's why a lot of times you can get frost even when you wouldn't think so because the air temperature never hit it but the air temperatures like up here at a certain level above sea level and then you're dropping down into these valleys that are a lot colder have a lot more moisture and if that freezes then you get the frost you can look it up i mean there's a whole scientific thing to it but <laughs> that's how i understand it so that's why i think down here lower where we're lower i'm seeing more of like the frost damage on some of the plants um, and up higher on my field i'm not so like i have this whole row of ageratum and up there none of the leaves have brown tips but at the bottom they do. So I feel like I definitely saved this bottom part of the snapdragons. They all look really good. I had been leaving pinks because I haven't been selling pinks and I was like, well, let the bees have them and stuff. There's no reason to cut them, but look how beautiful they still look. And they were under the frost cloth, so they didn't get any damage under there, which is good. And I do have some peaches and some whites that I still can pick today. And even some oranges, these are the perfect ones for this time of year. And sometimes like the very first frost doesn't really hurt you. Like if you think about it, you go through and you deadhead and you cut flowers and more come from the bottom. So if it just gets the very top of the plant and the bottom still looks healthy, you can cut off that top growth. And you know, say it's gonna be warm for the next month, you might get a lot more growth and have some stuff at the end of the season. So. I don't see it as a bad thing, not this time anyway. It wasn't too bad, it wasn't too long, and it didn't seem to get too much of my stuff. So I'm still in business for a few more weeks. That's awesome. So I didn't do a lot of field work today. I did get all of my frost cloth moved up this morning, and then I thought, you know what? These plants had a rough night. I'm gonna leave them be. I have a big florist order tomorrow. I have two subscriptions to do. And then I have a subscription Friday and I have my last farmer's market to get ready for. So I just thought I would give them a break. I wouldn't cut on them and I would just let them have a nice full day of sun and no trauma. <laughs> and um, I did clean up the farmhouse and do some stuff like that. And then I thought, you know what, that I'm going to go out and figure out what Celosia I like and which ones I didn't and what went wrong this year. And I thought I would just give you an update. I kind of went through all my notes. I look back at what I did. Um, and there's good and there's bad. And so I'm just going to go through that. One, I've been saying Celosia for I don't know how long in my life. 
and I did a Google pronunciation and it's Celosia. <laughs> I don't even know if I can say it. I still want to say Celosia. So anyway, Celosia, that's how I'm going to try it now. Celosia, <sighs> the good, the bad, and the ugly. So first off, I don't think I understood the three different kinds. There's the Cristata, the Spicata, and the Plumosa. So there's a few things that I did wrong with, with the Celosia. <laughs> so let's first, let's talk about the Spicata. So I had great luck. Well, first let's talk about when I very first started the Celosia inside. So I started it inside under grow lights and I had horrible germination. Like I hardly had any plants and I started a ton of it. So I was really bummed about that. And I came out and I just put a bunch of seeds in my field. And I was really worried because it said the recommended way was to start it inside under grow lights. But lo and behold, I got it. It, it germinated in the field. And one thing different about the field in the grow lights that I did is I did bury it an eighth of an inch deep in the field because I didn't want it to blow away. And I did not do that inside. So this year when I start it, I'm going to try to bury it a little bit and not just set the seed on top of the soil. But first I'm gonna talk about the spicata because I feel like the spicata was my favorite. It did the best for me this year. And then I'll get into the other ones and why I messed up and why they might not have done as well. So I'm gonna flip you around at this gorgeous flamingo feather. Celosia. And I've been cutting on this since it started blooming. So this is an awesome textural element in bouquets. It's beautiful. It's a lot of fun. And I just absolutely have loved it. These are awesome in the fall for like their dark foliage. I leave a few of the leaves and have just that purple spike coming up and they have just been spectacular. So I definitely will do the purple flamingo feather and the flamingo feather again. I absolutely love both varieties and look at them. I mean... They are huge and they grew from direct seeding them right into my field. And I just absolutely loved them. Now, sometimes in the vase, they flopped. And I was trying to figure out why, because sometimes it looked like I cut two identical stems and one would flop and one wouldn't. So what I started doing is just cutting them the day before I needed them. And anything that flopped, I didn't use. And the others I did use, and they normally lasted in the vase for a long time. Every once in a while, I will get a droopy one. Um, but for the most part, it did really well. So another variety, I'm going to walk up this way, of the spicata. Was, this is another one of my favorites this year. Like I cut it and I cut it and I just absolutely loved it. So this is the Ruby Parfait, and it was absolutely gorgeous. It's a little bit shorter. It didn't get quite as tall as the Flamingo Feather, but it really did well, and it is really gorgeous. Now, I didn't get as many plants when I direct seeded it, but these few plants were enough, and it did really well. And then I had the Selway mix, which is, that one was extremely short. This color got a little bit taller. Um, I used it quite a bit. I really liked it. The yellow wasn't my favorite because it always was darker at the bottom. Like it had already started to go to seed um, every time I came out to get it. The top is a really cute yellow and I probably could have used it more than I did. And then there was kind of, it wasn't quite as yellow. It was a lot lighter color over here. But it also came up really well. I mean, there's a pretty big patch of it that came up 
from just direct seating it. So all of the spicatas that I planted in my field did really well for direct seeding them and they performed and I used a ton of them all of the time. So that was awesome. I really liked that variety. And then there's the plumosa variety and I don't have as much of it. I had a little bit and I grew, I thought I grew a ton of varieties, but I had some of my own seed from last year and then I only had two varieties because I was, again, I think I was confused on Cristata versus Bacata versus Plumosa. I think I just got confused and didn't realize that I didn't have that much of the Plume Celosia. So I got the Sunday series in the Sylphide, Sylphid, Sylphide, Sylphid mix. I didn't pronunciate that one. Um, and I thought for the longest time that these green plumes that I got were because it said green. I thought it was the green sango, but that's actually not a plume type of Celosia. So I'll flip you around here. I did get a little bit of frost damage last night. Some of these taller ones, I think they were touching the frost cloth are actually the ones that kind of got the worst. But as you can see, like here's a really nice one. And then like, here's a really nice one. I used these so much in summer bouquets, in fall bouquets. I absolutely love this. So my issue now is figuring out which one it is. I ordered a ton of the green Sango, which is actually a Cristata. So it's not going to give me the plume. And the Selway mix says that like if I Google it, it shows a lot of the green plumes, but actually not in the Plumosa family. So I'm hoping that I can get this again because it was like my number one favorite Celosia this year. <laughs> and I'm having a hard time figuring it out. And I had another little batch of it down here. So maybe that is actually a better, it was a little shorter. So it was part of the Sunday series. So I guess I can get to that one next. It definitely, it was further on down this hill in this valley and it definitely got hit by frost so i should come out and cut all these off and hope that some of these lower um lower branches will branch out maybe before the end of the season and give me some more but i did love the sunday series except for it was too short like i love the colors and i used a ton of it like these colors are amazing like the orange and the yellow i used a ton of this and this was actually like for three weeks running this mixed with that green plume for the first picks at the farmer's market. It was absolutely gorgeous. And so I really liked it. I wish it would have gotten a little bit taller. So I'm going to look for you know, this is all I had. I had the Sunday series and the Sylphid or Sylphide, S-Y-L-P-H-I-D-E. Those are the only two plume Celosia I had. Celosia, Celosia, <laughs> Celosia I had. So I don't know what to do. I would like some taller plumes next year, but I do really like the colors that are in this batch, which then takes us to the Cristata. So I had the Axe series, the Azuka series, the Bar series, the Bombay series, the Bora Purple series, the Captain Evantha mix, the Chief series, the Green Sango, the Smashing, the Unlimited Coral, and the Yellow in the Yellow Queen. I had a ton of Celosia Cristata. And somewhere I got confused. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. So I had been researching things, you know, like when to pinch and stuff like that with it. 
and I really, I do like it. It's kind of the brain, um, and I, I just love the way it looks, especially if it's the right size in bouquets. And I got to reading about the Bombay, and I made a huge mistake. I read all about the Bombay series, <clears throat> and you don't pinch it. So I didn't think you pinched any of the Cristadas. So I didn't pinch any of them. And they didn't germinate the best from seed. So I'll turn you around here. Most of them have been cut off, but I had, this is the Bora, the Bora purple. The chief mix, you can see, like the germination was very bad in the chief mix. The, the yellow queen had great germination, just direct planting in the field. The unlimited coral, two plants in that whole section and some basil. <laughs> and then the green sango, pretty much empty. I think I did have one plant actually, so maybe, maybe I've ripped it all already. And then, let's see, what is this? The smashing. So it's kind of spotty. There's quite a few empty holes, but I did get some plants. And then, um, this might be the Azuka. Yeah, this is the Azuka see the tag down in there so then there's the azuka which you know not great germination but it did germinate by direct seeding it and then i had a few plants over here and i think i found there's a tag right here. this is the bombay so these were the bombay and then I had a few up here that said it was my Celestia from last year. So <clears throat> that's just the ones that I planted. Let's see, that was the Bora purple as well. It looks like that stem that got cut right there. And then these were all too short, so I don't even know what they are. So I had horrible germination at home. And then I didn't have great germination in the field, but I did get some germination of the different varieties. I got a few plants of each, but I didn't pinch any of them. So I got these massive heads of Celosia and they're beautiful and they're gorgeous. But you have to try to tear them apart to put them in bouquets. And early on I cut a few and I realized they started branching but it was too late. Like, <laughs> so then I went through and cut all but like three and it was too late. I didn't get all of the branching I should have gotten all of the smaller heads that I should have got. So lesson learned next year, I will try it again. I hope I get better germination this year when I start them inside and I will definitely be pinching them early on. I just got confused because it said you cannot pinch the Bombay series. It only shoots up one. And I thought that meant all of them. Anything that looked like a brain, anything in the Cristada family, I thought you couldn't pinch it. So it was a big mistake. It was kind of a crop failure for me this year, but lesson learned. And luckily I did get enough to make beautiful bouquets and use it and learn from it. So that is kind of my update on the Celosia. And I will be trying it again next year. I definitely have some favorites from this year. I might end up with more favorites next year if I do everything right. Um, and I will be looking for like some of the longer stemmed plumosa. So that's my update on Celosia. If you have any comments or any tips and you can drop them in the comments and otherwise I'll give you one last look. So that's kind of been my day on the flower farm. I just, I wanted to really get to know what I had done wrong with it and research it and see what I could do differently next time. Um, 
And so that's kind of what I did. So tomorrow is going to be a busy day. So we're going to have to get out here and start cutting early. And then there's this Celosia. And there's one, there's a huge one down there from last year growing in one of my peony plants. So obviously it'll start from seed outside and do really well. Um, but I think I will probably try to germinate some seed in my basement this year. And if it doesn't work, I'll plant it directly in the field again. And we'll just see if I have better luck next year. I hope you all have a great day. And I hope to see you in the next one.